What's going on guys and welcome back to a steaming hot grilled cheese dog or hot dog as some people like would like to say. I just say dog. That's it. Anyways, today we're going to be talking about our date range picker. Meaning that we're going to have a little date right here or a date range calendar where we could set our range and it'll filter depending on the range, which is pretty good because we're using this right now, which is pretty annoying and I don't want that. All right. So first of all, we do have to make some, I'm going to make some configurations in our reducers, our filter reducer right now. We do have everything undefined, our start date, end date. So let's start with that. What I want to do is actually make it start at the beginning of the month, the current month you're, you're in. So that's what we're going to be doing moment. And moment has a good little method that we could use. So moment dot start. Oh, not slash dot start of, and we're going to start of the month month just like that and for the end date you, I'm pretty sure you can already tell what it is moment dot end of the month month if you control save this get rid of this get rid of that we're not gonna sort by amount or date the amount or the uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just default to amount right now. So we could actually get rid of all of this. We don't need this no more. And as you can see that our there's only one because our range is from the 1st of the 24th all the way to the 31st. So to get to get that done, let's actually remove five and let's actually add just, you know, one. Control save. We should get both of them right here. Yep, there they are. Awesome. Now that we have that in place, now we could actually start focusing on our and at our date range picker. So we go go hop into our expense list filter or expense filter input. Yep, right here. Expense filter input. This is where we're going to be adding our date range since we already have our input to filter our select from amount or date to filter and also in here we're going to be adding our date range picker the first thing we do need to do is actually create uh, um, convert this into a class component and the reason why is because we got to keep track of focused I don't know if you know in the last in the last video let me actually right here in the last video we, we are required to have this prop focused right for our uh, date range or for our single date picker. Well, the same is for our date range picker. We need to have this as well and we need to create, we need to keep track of it to say if it's false or true, just like we're setting it over here, um, right here on focus, change, set the state of focus. So we do need to have that there. So let's actually create this into a component. So class, Expense filter input extend react dot component and this is where we're gonna be adding all of our stuff. We do need to grab all this, cut that out. And right here we need to use the render method, render that's going to return our component. And let me actually make this clean it up a bit. Okay. Okay. And inside of this, we do need a get state is going to equal. And like I said, we are going to be keeping track of focused and we're going to set this to null right now. We don't want it to be false. We want it null. down here. We could just get rid of this. All right, now we could actually import the thing that we need to import or the component. So import something from react dates. Like remember guys, I like doing this so that way in here, I could just literally say react, see date range picker and we grab the one we need. And then right below our select, 
we're going to add that component. So date range picker, date range picker. Okay. So let's actually look, you could actually look if you want to on, on a uh, Google. So let me see air react dates. We're going to get our, this one GitHub and we're going to go search for react date range picker. Here it is. And this is what it needs. Most, <laughs> it's a lot, it's a lot to start off. You don't need the ID. You don't need the IDs to, for any of these, but you do need the start date, the end date on date changes, focus input is a lot. So I'm just copied all of this. Well, actually let me just copy this. And then you already know what most of them do. Actually, you know what all of them do. It's pretty straightforward. I'm not even gonna lie. It is pretty straightforward. So start date. Before I even get into that, we do need to over oh, here where in props, we do need to add the, this keyword. The reason why is because we're not, we're not just using a stateless component now where we pass in props. This already has props inside. We just need to call it by this dot props. So anything that has props like right here, this dot props, this dot props. And I think that was all of them. I think so props this dot props I'm just look props props right here okay this one okay okay awesome this dot props now we now we got that in change or we got that uh, done now we can focus on this so our start date as we all know lives inside our filters so this dot props dot already have dot prop props dot filters dot start start date I'm gonna just copy this copy we don't need this so I'm gonna just get rid of that we don't need this as well I'm just get rid of it right now and then right here paste that and date is this in front and for on date change i am going to do this a little bit different so i'm gonna get rid of all of this and we're going to create a method so i'm going to say this dot on date change on dates change yeah so above right below our state we're gonna on date change we're going to set that equal to an arrow function and here we're going to be destructuring our our object start date and date and you might be wondering okay where's the object coming from well if you take notice that's what they're doing right here on date changes they're just they're just it's an arrow function and they're going to be destructuring an object that's coming in so you don't have to worry about passing in anything in here. Where's that right here? It does it by itself. So don't worry about that. Just destructure it and grab the start date and the end date. Now, remember this is from, this is from a library, uh, react date and this date ranger. So if you want to look more into it, just read the docs. It does give you a detailed version of what's happening around here. But on this part over here, they're actually setting up their state. So they have props, but we don't have props for start date and end date. We actually have a store that keeps track of that. So what we're going to do is actually dispatch our actions from right here. And we already have functions that dispatch that action. And that is called set start date and set end and date. set end date, right? And here, this is where we're going to be doing this dot props and, and dot dispatch our action. So set start date, which is going to be our start date that we got back. Start date, right? And then this dot props dot dispatch. And then we're going to be doing set, uh, end date passing in our end date just like that now that we have that 
right here, focused input. And this is going to be for our focus. Now, the reason we put null is because we're going to have two dates. As you can see over here, let me actually pull one up right here. We're going to have two calendars, actually. You see, our start date pulls up one calendar, and then our end date is going to pull up our other calendar. That's why over here we did need that null instead of saying true or false. Because in the other in the other single date, we only had one calendar. So, yeah, we could put true or false there. And here we couldn't. So right here, it's not going to be focused. It's going to just be focused, just like that. And on focus change, we're going to get something back for focus. And we're going to just set focused to focused input. Now, let me actually get rid of all of these comments. Okay. Now, if we control save this, let's hope we don't get an error. And there we go. We have our start and end date. Like we said, we did set it for the month. And we are getting these things back. Let's actually add some stuff outside this date range. So just to make sure it's actually working, I'm going to add one in February. at expense. And we don't grab that. Awesome. But if we change this to February 29th, we should see that coming up, which we do. The one thing that does we do need to take account for is that if you go back, we can these are all canceled out as you, you can't pick anything, anything from the past. And we want to change that. We've already figured how to do that. We already figured out how to do that in the last video. So I'm literally, it's literally a copy and paste, but let's type it out. So number of months, number of months is going to be set equal to one. I still want one month per date. I don't want this. Although you could leave it at two if you wanted to, I don't. And then we also have is out range, side range. We're going to set that into an arrow function, but just setting it to false. Now, there is one more thing that I wanted to add, and this is new. All right. And this is called, uh, we're going to clear our dates. So it's called show clear dates. And we're going to just set that equal to true now what this does obviously right here we can't clear our dates fast enough we can't clear them so this actually allows it allows us to clear the dates meaning that it's going to add a little x you're going to see you're going to see let's just see as that little x so we could just clear this date and now everything goes away but we could actually one and let's go to the 29th and there we go and we could actually go back back in the past. Now, obviously, if you do clear it, we would want uh, all of our stuff here shown. And that's actually a pretty simple fix, which I'm not going to do. I'm going to let you guys do it. You need to get hands on experience on these things. So I'm going to let you do it. Don't worry. In the next video, we are going to fix that, fix that error just in case, but I'm giving you some time to do it. And so that way you don't scroll, scroll through, through the video to the very end to see what I did. I'm going to just wait until the next video. And I hope you guys actually intend to do it. But that is it, guys, for this video. All I wanted to do was show you this date range picker and uh, filter our our expense list through this, uh, which it should still work, right? Uh, let's put this one 13th. Add, yes, let's make another one. Amount. Let's actually go back to December. That one shouldn't be showing. Awesome. And if I clear this, all of our stuff should be showing if you actually do it. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I do hope you actually learned something. If you liked it, please leave a like and a thumbs up. Why did I say like? That's a, I don't know. Give me a like. Give me a like. <laughs> uh, leave a comment down below on what I could have done better or what I should do next time. And subscribe if you haven't. And I really do thank you for spending time watching this video. It's, I mean, I'm, I'm grabbing some of your time. You're, you're actually putting in time to watch my videos. That means a lot to me. So thank you guys. And I'll see, well, let me tell you what I'm going to be, or what we're going to be doing in the next video. In the next video is going to be a little bit more, I guess, uh, we're doing testing units. All right. I don't know. I don't know if you guys want to do test units, but it's actually a very important concept when you're doing software development. And we're going to be doing that in the next video. We're going to be using Jest to actually 
run tests on this application. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing. All right. So in the next video, look forward to using Jest for our testing. And that is it. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.